Hey guys, so for this next video, I'm gonna do something a little different. I have been getting the request to follow or do some kind of video on Sendai Girls for quite a while, and I can understand why. Any promotion led by uh, Maiko Satomura has to have some pretty great wrestlers in it, right? Well, I, I've seen like one or two matches or shows from them in the past, but I have not been following up on them just because it's just too many promotions. So I figured it, 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 I don't really have the time right now to kind of get into another promotion and do this big video like I did with my other ones for Ice Ribbon and Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. So what I'm going to do, and I suggested this on Twitter and the people who responded to that seemed like they would be interested in it. I'm just going to be watching uh, a number of shows. I, I have three right now to watch. The first one is the show on the 8th, I believe, of um, June then the 9th, and then uh, they have one on the 7th of like July or something like that. Anyway, I'm gonna be watching those three and I'm just going to be saying my opinions as I'm watching them to save time and then try to you know, edit out the parts where I'm not really saying anything or it's boring or whatnot. The only thing is uh, because I have to do this all at like once, there's no like redos. Uh, some things outside my room might be picked up. I'm sorry about that in advance. There's nothing I can do about that. And I don't know if the TV is going to be picked up because I am watching this on my TV. So let's let's get to it. First match looks like it's some kind of title match. I mean, they're holding a title here. Uh, for those who don't know, Sendai Girls, um, while one of the more accessible, it's not really accessible in terms of um, watching it. So there's no like English announcer and there's no subtitles or anything like that. So right away, if I had to guess, I'd say these two are either both um, like rookies or the Sendai equivalent of Young Lions, or one of them is and the other one's from a different promotion. They, they both seem to have very simple outfits. Looks like there's some pretty cool amateur wrestling going on here. I, I always really enjoy when a promotion shines a light on the, um, the actual kind of wrestling part of the wrestling business. Uh, Stardom has does it really well. Um, I don't think Tokyo Joshi did it too well except for the top people. And Ice Ribbon did it pretty well as well. Um, it's it's just really fun to watch them kind of do some... like Not really amateur wrestling, but as close to amateur wrestling as you can get in pro wrestling. I really like the girl in the greens uh, like spirit. I don't know, She she she's kind of putting some like character into her moves like it, it, like she's just kicking people but it, it's not like other people kicking people you know it's kind of feels a little special to her how she's doing it like that's that's kind of how I get the the feeling of watching her do stuff yeah this other girl has to be new in some way she's doing a lot of drop kicks and from what I've seen in Joshi wrestling one of the first moves you learn and or um, do a lot is always a drop kick I really like the energy that these two have they it's clear that they're very they're trying very hard like they're doing their best they're not they're not you know having an off day or being sluggish about it they're they're passionate about what they're doing and I, I love that in rookies to put on a good match you don't have to be the best wrestler to me you have to be passionate about it you know um, not to say that people who aren't like super passionate can't put on good matches but I feel like passion and character can shine enough in a match to kind of overshadow any kind of faults that they have. You know, I mean, they're not really doing too many big moves. I think the most crazy thing I've seen other than a drop kick is right here, this uh, um, half Boston Crab, I think it's what it's called, one lake Boston Crab. It's like, it, it's nothing special, but it's it's still very entertaining to watch. You know, it's really interesting watching matches involving two um, young and or rookie wrestlers because you never really know how it's going to end. With the upper card girls and everything, they all have their finishers, they all have their signatures, so you know that the match is probably going to end with someone's finisher or signature or some kind of flash pin. But with these, these younger girls who don't have a very wide uh, move set, it's, it's kind of interesting to think you know like what move is going to end the match it can't be anything too spectacular so what you know like what is it going to be most likely it's probably going to be a flash pin if I had to guess because 
it's probably too early for them to have a effective finisher. Or if it is going to be a move, it's going to be a move that's not really anything too strong. It's just going to be a move, you know. So it looks like a green one. That's kind of who I was cheering for. I don't know. I really liked her spirit. It was a flash pin. It, it, that was a really good match. For an opening match, that did exactly what it needed to do. It got you kind of into the promotion. They both put on a hell of a performance. They showed off. Oh, that was for a belt. I wonder if that's a Sendai belt. Does Sendai have a kind of lower down on the ranking person belt like stardom? I'll have to research that. I'll put a, anything that I talk about here that I don't know, I'll 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 kinda I'll try to research afterwards and then put it on the screen, you know, in text. Don't worry, while while this is going to be done to save time and whatnot, I'm not gonna be completely lazy about it. I'm just voicing my opinion as it's happening, and then I'll answer the questions later. Oh, sweet. So I actually, this next match looks like it's um, between two more experienced people. One of these people I actually really know. Uh, I, I've seen a match before. She was someone who got me interested and I wanted to see what she was about. She's kind of like a um, Sadako or uh, or like a Samara from The Ring or Grudge kind of characters. White face, long black hair. She's kind of like a ghost. And from what I remember, her matches were pretty funny. I don't think she's supposed to be a serious wrestler. From what I remember, she was kind of a, like she, she, she she's like a veteran, and now she's kind of doing her own thing at the end of her career. She's giving her some kind of food. I don't know if it's like an ice cream or something. It kind of looks like ice cream, but it also has like leaves and Okay, yeah, that definitely can be ice cream. The way she bit into it and stuff like that, it was like stretchy and whatnot. Well, she seems to be really, um, Excited about it. She, she likes it. She wants more. Yeah, I think she's trying to lure her into a false sense of security with the with the candy or food. So there's a lot of those things above the ring. I don't fully understand what this is. See, the, the things like this is why having subtitles and or some kind of way to explain to non-Japanese audience what's going on is important to me. I'm not saying they have to, or I'm not even saying it's a bad thing technically, but to me personally, as a person trying to watch this, I don't know what's going on. It's some kind of food, I think, and it's all like wrapped up on strings. As far as I could tell, they're, they're, they're trying to reach it, so maybe if they get it, they win, but there's like 50 of them up there. So all, do you need to get all of them or do you just need to get one? If it was just one, then why not have it in the middle of the ring? It, it is kind of funny how they keep like mistakenly hitting each other with like moves, and they're not really trying to. That's funny. Like that part's funny, but everything else is pretty. It, it's just not for me. I mean, she's trying to pin her. So what? The, what's the point of the things above the ring? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand this match. Yeah, that match wasn't for me. I don't. She won by pinning her. All right, on to the next match. Uh, some time has passed since the match before this one and this one, as you could probably tell by the different attire, probably different light setup, and the focus not sucking as much, maybe. I don't know, I still haven't figured that out. Anyway, this next match looks like it's a six-man tag match. Uh, lots of people I recognized, Hikaru Shida, Mei Suruga, and um, Kaoru. I, I've seen her a little bit. I don't know too much about her, though. The rest of them, I can probably guess. I, I've done a little bit of research for the rest of the show here, and it looks like Mei Suruga and Sakura, or no, not Sakura, Hikaru are teaming with someone named Hyen. Hmm. I'm not really sure about her. On the other side, uh, we have Alex Lee and Heidi Katrina. Oh man, I love May. As some of you probably already know, May Saruga is um, in my top 10 favorite wrestlers right now. Even though I almost never get to see her wrestle because the promotions she wrestles for are not ones that I actually watch. Problem with looking up a, a promotions roster list online is you never know if it's current or not. Let's see this. So it looks like Ami Sato. 
Charlie Evans. It says it's a freelancer. Um, Chihiro, I knew that one. Uh, Dash, Chisako, okay. Heidi Katrina, oh, so that one of the white chicks is uh, signed. Um, Monami, Maiko, Mika Iwara, Mikoto Shindo. Oh, no, that says she signed a Marvelous. Okay. Millie McKenzie, no freelancer. Sadi signed a Diana. Man, May is so good. I can't wait for another year or two when she's just, like, on the top of the Joshi world. I'm assuming this Hyen person isn't very good and or has not been wrestling for a very long time. She's got a good northern, though. That's about it so far. All right, so Hikaru Shida's in now. She's someone that people keep telling me like to, to look into and everything I've seen of her, she's just been okay. I don't know. I don't know if I'm just not seeing the right matches, but she's just been okay. Like she's not mind blowing or anything. So far for this match, Hikaru Shida seems to be one of the more um, solid performers in there uh, other than my Saruga. The match was okay. It was it was very cluttered and kind of seemed sloppy, like unorganized. Uh, so that's something that I've noticed with a lot of these promotions that have smaller rosters because they rely on outside forces so much. It kind of feels like they've the people in the matches don't really have very good chemistry a lot of the times. It's it's just something that. I've, I've noticed when I've been looking in promotions outside of Stardom. Because Stardom has an insanely huge roster for Joshi. Alright, so we're we'll moving on to the next match. I know a number of these people without even looking at my book. We have Maiko Satomura, Yu, and Aja Kong. Um, there is one person that I don't know off the top of my head. Mika Iwata. Okay, so Mika Iwata and Maiko are signed. And the other two are freelancers. Now, three of these four people I do know, and I do know that they're really good, so I'm looking forward to this. I don't know too much about Mika Iwata, but I'm hoping to learn a little bit something from this. So far, I'm really liking Mika. I don't know if she's like known as being really good or well-known or not. I haven't really heard her name thrown around a lot in a lot of places. So far, everything about her seems really cool. Her outfit, her fighting style. Her movements in the ring. I'm not going to really comment on Maiko as much because I just, Maiko's awesome. It's Maiko Satomura. She's amazing. Or or Mako. I'm not really sure. I, I believe Mako might be the correct way to say it. I've always just called her Maiko though, so it's kind of hard for me to turn it around. But she's amazing. She's like one of the best wrestlers in the world. She's one of the women in Joshi Wrestling that I'm legit like afraid of, that I would back down from in a heartbeat if anything ever went bad between me and her <laughs> so she's she's amazing like that's all you need to know is i am 100 percent behind mako satamora she's phenomenal i can already tell that the that this promotion is a lot like ice ribbon and tokyo joshi uh, in my opinion anyway in that the the higher up people on the card are like really really good like can hang with stardom any day of the week good uh, but the lower part of it, it is just not as good in my like in my opinion obviously you know the everything i say in this video or any of my videos is all you know opinion based unless it's a stat video and then that's just numbers and that's just fact but you know anything i say in this video is it, just me my opinions of this promotion firsthand it, you know, if you want to, you know, consider my opinion, uh, you know, an, an actual thing to consider, that's great. And I'm, I'm honored, but, but if I don't like something that you like, that doesn't mean it's not good. It just means it's not for me. Yeah. So far right now, I'm super impressed with Mika. Um, I, I'll have to look into her more. I'm, I'm hoping that she's in the next two shows that I need to watch too. Uh, but yeah, the only two people who have really caught my eye so far who are like from the promotion are Mika Iwata and the the rookie from the beginning, which I found out her name was uh, Mikoto Shindo. 
she she was really good. I really liked her and I really liked Mika. It makes me wonder where on the card Mika is because she's teaming with Maiko in the what the third match of the promotion. Yeah. Third match out of five matches. It's not a bad place to be and that's not necessarily an indicator of where you are on the card. But the fact that she's teaming with Maiko might be a good indication. But it could also be that she's the only one that was free since the rest of the people are in title matches later and title matches take precedence. Yeah, I'm becoming a huge Mika fan. This, like, and I'm not joking you guys or anything. This is literally the first time I've ever seen Mika Iwata ever. Um, If she was in the Sendai show that I watched, like, almost a year ago, I don't know. But I don't remember anything from that. All I know now is that she's... Like, I'm really loving her spirit, her her wrestling style, her look, everything. Yeah, I'm really liking her moveset. Mika's moveset, it's, it's very um, strike-based so far. Uh, I don't know if she's considered a striker or not. But so far, I've really enjoyed a lot of her moveset. It could just be because her two opponents right now are, are kind of bigger. So she's probably leaving out some of her other moves that involve non-strikes. That's a thing that I I generally see in in Joshi is that some wrestlers have certain moves that they just can't do on some people. And then they just end up not doing it. And then you have freaks of nature like Kagetsu who could just do whatever she wants to anybody. So this is, unless I'm mistaken, I believe Aja Kong is a freelancer. So this is two freelancers fighting two people from Sendai. That's interesting. It's, you know, it's so weird seeing these other promotions that rely on freelancers so much. Because me being a kind of just primarily or only stardom based viewer for like most of my viewing. it's, It's odd seeing majority of the people in the show not be from the promotion it's it's so odd i mean stardom right now has over 20 signed people it's insane mika iwata i'm getting like i have a feeling she's gonna be like one of my new favorites kind of like may kind of won my heart after only seeing her a couple of times may saruga um, i don't even really watch her wrestle anymore and she's still in my like top 10 that's how that's how much I like her style and her look, but Mika, I'm really really liking her too. And there's even a possibility that I can keep watching her matches because Sendai Girls, I think, uploads matches to YouTube now. That was a really really good match. Uh, I'm getting a little worried though because this show has like a name it's like the big show or something like that and i'm worried that this is supposed to be like their like pay-per-view equivalent and i'm hoping that that's not true because if it is not only is it a short show there's only five matches it's kind of lacking up until now oh Mika Iwata. Yeah. I'm a fan, guys. I'm a, I'm a huge Mika fan now. It only took that one match. The cool thing about wrestling, in my opinion, is it really, for you to connect with a wrestler, it really only takes one match. You see them, and something about what they're doing on the screen connects with you at an individual level in some way. And it's just sparks. You know, like, you, you're like, yes. I'm a fan, like right away. And Mika, so far, like that's what she did in this one match. I'm, a, I'm hoping it's not one of those, this is just like a, a really good match from her, but the rest kind of are okay or suck, because it would be really disappointing. And again, the fact that it's not subtitled or anything like that is coming into play again, as Mako is making some kind of big speech or whatever with Mika standing there next to her. I'm assuming it probably has something to do with Mika, but I don't know. I, I I can't tell. 
And that's really why I, I've, I've never been able to get into another promotion. Here, I don't know what the hell's happening. I gotta be honest, not too excited about this one. Uh, it's the SGPW tag match. Millie McKenzie and Charlie Evans versus Dash Chisako and Hiroyo Matsumoto. Hmm. So it looks like the only person in this match who's signed is Dash. There's nothing like going into a match and not being like excited for it. I'm really hoping it like proves me wrong, but as far as I can tell, I'm just not going to really enjoy this. Or, uh, no, l let me rephrase that. It's not that I'm not going to enjoy it. It's that I'm going to, like, probably, it's probably just going to be okay, you know? I know Haroyo's pretty great, um, and I've heard really good things about Dash. But I don't know about these two foreigners, so it's kind of a hit or miss right now. So, yeah, I, I really like Dash in that opening sequence. She was pretty great. It, um, she was very solid like fast fluid uh, you could tell that she's very skillful um, even though they didn't really do too much you could you could just kind of tell dash seems to be very quick I like that um, I've always I, I always really liked quick wrestlers uh, they're not my like favorite type of wrestlers but they're very entertaining to watch when they're done well and it looks like so far that dash is one of the people that does it well uh, so the match was pretty good. Uh, I mean, it was definitely, you know, a good match, for sure. They all did really great, everyone. I just didn't really connect with the match in any way, I guess. Uh, it could just be because I don't know any of them. I don't know the storylines. I don't know the, the characters, what each one had to do to get to this point. You know, it's... And the ending kind of soured me a little with the... Uh, the quick roll up, or like the the counter roll up after Dash did her frog splash thing. Uh, yeah, Dash is really cool. I, I really like Dash. Definitely not gonna be like in like like a top ten kind of scenario, but like she's definitely someone that I really like and that I would I would love to watch again for sure. All right, finally on to the last match of this show. This is taking a lot longer than I thought it was. I thought the shows would only be like an hour, hour and a half max, but each one of them's like two hours. And it's not just two hours of nothing. It's like two hours of wrestling. So the main event of this one is Sare, S-A-R-E-E-E, -E -E, versus Chihiro uh, Hashimoto, I think is her last name. I don't have all of my... Oh. So yeah, the main event is Chihiro Hashimoto versus Sare A with three E's, I think. Uh, I do know a little bit about Chihiro. I've seen her a couple of times. Um, she's one of the two people who used to regularly come over to the stardom every now and then and uh, have kind of like special matches over there. Sare, I don't, I, I'm probably going to get blasted for the way I'm saying her name, but the, I've heard about her. Apparently, she's been killing it this year. A lot of people uh, are considering her like the uh, Joshi of the year this year. Um, but I've never seen her in anything ever before. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what she can do here. It is weird that the person holding the main belt of Sendai is from Marvelous. I, I'm not really sure what that's about. I guess when you have smaller rosters, you can't really just have it on someone signed there all the time. Um, it, it it just wouldn't be viable because then you would have a situation where you have someone holding a belt for like three years, you know, and then that's that's almost never a good thing. Just based on what I've heard, I, this is most likely going to be a very good match. Just because Chihiro, I, I have some experience with and I know she's a very good like technical wrestler, power wrestler in a way. And uh, everyone's been talking up Sari, Sare, A, Sare for a long time. So kind of excited about this one. Hopefully it, it doesn't disappoint. 
This match has had quite a slow start to it. If I know anything about Joshi or just Japanese wrestling in general, is that a lot of the later like singles matches, like main events, they tend to have a very slow build into an all-out war. Uh, I believe it's just kind of the style that they wrestle. And I hope that that's what they're going for because right now it's like, it's it, it hasn't really drawn me in it in any way. It's a good match for sure, but not knowing who these people are, not knowing their stories, uh, their character arcs, how they got here, um, it, it, there's no there's nothing drawing me in except for the match itself, and and unlike like for example Mika Mika Iwata earlier when I was watching her match, she drew me in right away just from like the way she did things. And right now, I'm not really getting too much from either one of these two. They're putting on a really good match, don't get me wrong, but I really wouldn't put either one of these on my favorite list anytime soon, so far. Um, like I said, I'm hoping that they're following the typical Joshi Japanese style uh, formula where later on in the match, it's gonna get like really hard um, hitting, some big moves will be thrown out, and it'll, it'll seem like an all out war. The problem is, is everything they're doing, it could have some kind of meaning behind it that I just don't know about because this is my first time seeing them. It, like for example, if you if you were to watch Tam vs. Arisa um, that they just recently had for the white belt, yeah, it's a really good match. It's a really great match, but it, it transcends greatness once you apply all of the story elements and the character development and how they've treated each other for the last six, seven months. It, a story can really help wrestling, in my opinion. It can make a match go from great to amazing or whatever you put above great. Like it could turn it into a five-star match is what I'm saying, if you wanna put it in those terms. Usually when I watch matches and stuff from other promotions like this, either from the YouTube channel or for um, just my own personal, you know, viewing time. Uh, if I if I come across a match or a wrestler that's like really good, I usually, for those of you who don't know, I watch every Stardom show when it's completely out with my dad at one sitting. Like it's it's like an event. We we watch all the matches of that show um, all together, and usually uh, when I find a match or a wrestler from another promotion that's really good that I want you know I'll go and I'll show uh, my dad and we'll we'll watch the match together usually he's not really too into it because he, um, him the the story and the characters are way more important than the, the matches themselves for most part like he, he'll appreciate the wrestling but he can't really get behind any of them because he doesn't know what they're saying or you know who they are and um, I'm a little bit more lenient in that aspect but he, he's like really that's kind of like a, a thing that needs to be done for him to really enjoy something. The, the reason why I bring that up is because so far in this show, the only person I, wanted, I would want to show him would be Mika. There, there really wasn't anybody in here who really drew me in enough that I would be like, oh, dad, you have to see this person. But yeah, the, the, the only one who's really drawn me in so far has been Mika. Um, I'm starting to get there with Sare right now. She's really showing a lot of spirit, and I really love it. I really, I really like wrestlers that can that get like passionate, you know. Um, that's just the kind of wrestler that I really like, you know. Momo when she starts flipping out, uh, Hiromi Mamura when you know when she's starts you know going her shout, all that stuff. It's it's the kind of person I like to cheer for. Yeah, it, it, it's funny because this is supposed to be some kind of like retrospective or review of Sendai and their roster and their shows and everything, but I, Sare right now is completely outshining Chihiro in my opinion in terms of entertainment value for me. I like After this match, I would want to go see another Sare match, but not necessarily Chihiro's. Not that she's a bad wrestler, she's a really great wrestler, don't get me wrong. She's just not doing anything for me right now. Um, it was very easy for me to pick a side in this match once the midway mark kind of went away and they started to get a little bit more brutal. Oh yeah, they're definitely following the 
the typical Joshi formula here. And I don't say that in a bad way. Formulas are there for a reason. It's, it's how you do them is what matters. I don't care if you're following the formula as long as it's entertaining. I mean, if you look at a lot of stardom shows, they all follow a, a typical formula as well, but it's just each wrestler doing their own individual moves and their own uni uh, unique personality quirks that make that formula new and fresh again. And that's what these two are doing right here. They're they're definitely they're definitely following the typical formula, but they're doing it in a way that's unique to them, and that already is putting on a good match. Uh, honestly, this match is only making me want to look into Sade more. It, I'm very curious to know if she's the ace of her promotion. I do know a little bit about Marvelous, even though I haven't made a video about it. I, I tried watching it once. I even had a subscription to their streaming service at one point. But um, I wasn't enjoying their matches or their shows enough for me to keep the subscription. And money was tight, so that was one of the first things that I nicked off. Uh, but something I did know about Marvelous is that uh, Takumi Iroha or what me and my dad like to call her red pants. She was kind of personally picked by the owner of Marvelous, the the legend. Uh, I, I can't say her name right now, I don't really know it. It's like, Ch I know it starts with like Chi, C-H-I, it's like Chigusa, Chigasu or something like that. She um, She's like a legend, uh, old Joshi period, one of the best. And she personally picked Takumi uh, to to come be like a disciple of hers and that's why Marvelous and Stardom uh, work together a little bit because th there's no bad blood there that's that's one of the ways that you, you can kind of poach someone from another promotion and it be seen as acceptable is that she took her on as a personal protege and that's an honor because she, who, who she is and I always just assume that um, Takumi, and I don't know if I'm saying her name right. It's like, it could be Takumi or Takumi. Or Takumi, probably. Takumi is probably the right way, but I was assumed that uh, Takumi was the, the ace of Marvelous. But for this chick right here, Sade, to be signed to Star or Marvelous oof, and have the main belt for Sendai, it, it doesn't really make much sense because nothing against Sade, but if she's not the ace of Marvelous, then that kind of diminishes Sendai a little bit. That not even the like the not even the ace of Marvelous, someone lower than the ace of Marvelous, is good enough to have the main belt of another promotion. So it looks like some chick with purple. Oh, is that? Oh, that's Mika. That's Miki Iwata. Ooh, so is her next defender or challenge going to be Mika Iwata? I hope that happens in the two shows that I have downloaded. Now, that's a match I really want to see. <laughs> Isn't that a huge coincidence? I watch this show not knowing anybody in here. I pick out two wrestlers that I really started to get behind, Miki Iwata and Sade. And what singles match are they getting ready to do, or like they're setting up here at the end of the show, by the end? It's Miki Iwata versus Sade. Or at least that's what it looked like. I, I, I don't know what they're actually saying. So yeah, first show of Sendai, it, it, was, it was pretty good. Um, unfortunately, I had to stretch it out I watched like the first half, uh, and then like a couple hours later, I watched part of the second half, and then like literally the next day, I watched the main event. That might have taken away from some of the impact of the show of a whole, but uh, it it was just a good show. The last two matches were really great. Was it the last two? No, the. The third match and the fifth match, the Aja Kong and Yu versus Mako and Mika Iwata, that match was phenomenal. That was probably my favorite match of the show. 
And then the last match, title versus title. Um, Chihiro Hashimoto versus Sade. Wait, title versus title? Oh, is this where Sade won it? Oh, okay. I assumed that she had it coming into this match. I guess I was wrong. Because when I was looking these people up, um, when I looked up like Sendai or whatever, it showed the champion, like the current champions, and one of the, and it said Sade because it was already updated because this happened last month. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so yeah, those two matches were really good. Every other match was just not entertaining. Honestly, I found the first match with the two rookies, Manami versus Mikoto Shindo. Much more entertaining than the second match with the with Iger and Kusei Sakura Hirota, and then the third match with Kaoru, Alex Lee, and Heidi Katrina versus Hikaru Shida, Hyun, and Mei, and that's with Mei in it. Like you guys know, I'm a huge Mei fan. I, I still found that first match with two rookies more entertaining than them two, and then that third match the one with May was, in my opinion, more entertaining than the tag match, the tag title match that happened. If I had to put it in order, I would say the matches I enjoyed the most was number one, the the two versus two, Aja Kong and Yu versus Mako and Mika Iwata. Then number two would be the title versus title, Chihiro Hashimoto versus Sade. Then number three would be Maname versus Mikota Mikoto Shindo. Then the one with May would be number fourth. And then I guess number five would have to be the tag title match just because that comedy Iger match was it just it didn't I didn't get it. I don't I don't know if there's some kind of cultural stuff going on with those that food thing or like if it's something that happens all the time. Oh, it's going right to the next show. If, if, if that's just a thing or if there were rules that I didn't fully understand, but you, you saw me react to it. I, it wasn't for me. So overall, first show over and it was, it was a good show. Uh, I wouldn't say it was a great show. The, there was only really two matches that I really enjoyed that I thought that I would consider great. And that's just not enough on a five show or a five match show to consider it anything better than a good show um, hopefully the next two shows are much better but I, I don't know if they are going to because I kind of got the feeling that the show that I just watched the one that happened on June 8th was a bigger show than usual it had like a special name on the on cage match or whatever when I was looking up the um, or no not cage match wrestling data.com it had a special name next to it on the listing while this next one doesn't and I don't know if the the one in July did or not. I didn't check. So I'm I'm really on the fence about <laughs> including these next two. Um, I'm going to go through and edit all of the stuff that I already did for this first one and see how long it is and then decide because this is kind of hard to do. <laughs> the chair is not very comfortable and the lights I know for you guys, you probably don't realize this, but these lights are super bright and there's one right here and that's where my TV is, like right here. So I'm constantly looking up above a super bright thing. I could move it, sure, but then the lighting would look worse and it it already looks bad, but it could look a lot worse, trust me. So let's see if this is the end or not. <laughs> 